Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 1st, 2023. Well, Friday was another buying spree where we just couldn't buy up enough big tech. Unfortunately, not a whole lot changed here in the dynamics of the market. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Monday edition to the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Well, my goodness, we had a lot of emotion spill out on the market last week, and unfortunately, we're probably going to have a lot of emotion spill out on the market this week as well. Now, what's interesting is Goldman is out there warning that the CTAs, which, by the way, computer-traded algorithms, are set to sell about $200 billion um, in stocks this week. Now, if that were to occur, and I'm not saying that it will, it's just Goldman suggesting that the CTAs are set that way. If that were to occur, that could create a little bit of fear here in the market. So make sure you're paying attention and watch for that because we've got a lot of things that the market's got to deal with this week. Now, one of the reasons that they may be thinking like that on the um, with the CTA is, is just simply the fact that um, earnings growth for the S&P 500 right now is suggesting to be about zero uh, for, the, for the year. They were expecting it to be down actually about 5.8%. Right now they're suggesting it's going to be about zero. And we've pushed stocks up so much, we're now trading at 19 times forward earnings which is a pretty overbought condition for our markets. Now, let's take a look at these indexes, see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, first off, if you take a look, we are trying here this morning to push the diamonds out just a little teeny tiny bit, but overall, our futures are very, very flat here this morning. You can see we push right up into that resistance level of the chart, that big resistance level that, well, we've been kind of stuck under for a long period of time. So let's keep an eye on that. And if we were to break this level up here, as you can see, if we can break that level, if the bulls are inspired, I would suggest maybe up into here might be that next possibility. We'll test some of those wicks up in here on the diamonds. If those bears were to find inspiration, well, let's keep in mind the only support that we have underneath this right now of consequence would be a retest of this chop range that we have seen. And unfortunately, that would be a very big point move back to the downside. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that. If we can actually find enough energy to pop through up here based on earnings, then let's watch um, for those bulls to continue to engage and push on through. Let's take a look at our technicals here real quick. Our technicals are very bullish still here in the chart. Now, I kind of wish that our 50-day moving average was a little bit more turned to the upside, but we've got all of our moving averages uh, kind of on the right side of each other, except that 500-day moving average, which we're crossing back up through right now. But let's keep a close eye on those. Nothing wrong there in that chart. Very bullish at the moment. Let's take a look at our SPY, SPY, buying spree really went on in the SPY. You do want to consider on Thursday and Friday, the SPY gained 9%, almost a 10% move in two days. Talk about emotional market. Now, as we push back up, let's keep an eye on these resistance levels up here. Now, we did push through this marked resistance that I had on here on Friday. So let's push this on up to that next little area right in there. And that's about where we're going, at least at the moment. You can see that corresponds with some quite a few places here in that chart on the SPY. So let's keep an eye on that. If the, the bulls can keep pushing, maybe a press through that area in the chart and if we're going to press through there then i think we've got to move substantially higher here um, in the spy maybe pushing up into uh, this area of the market 
would be that next logical move. If those bears find inspiration, well, unfortunately, a retest of some of these support levels. We might be able to come down here and catch a little support there. That would be a big point move. And if they push on through down there, of course, there's our, there's our next level of price support in the chart. Uh, technicals here in the SPY, also bullish, except for that 500 day moving average where we have kind of used that as a lid here recently in uh, the SPY. Let's see if they can kind of continue to keep that going and maybe push on through there. If um, those bears continue to use that area as resistance, well, there you have it. Um, then let's take a look at our QQQ. Our QQQ, well, that's where all the energy um, has been. As a matter of fact, it was just a very select few stocks that continue to move the markets higher here. And we were really ignoring the situation in banking as if none of that was going on. And you probably saw the news this morning that JP Morgan has picked up um, First Republic. They bought First Republic or taking over First Republic. We still have an awful lot of those regional banks uh, running into massive outflows. We'll see how that continues as we move forward. But as you can see, pushing through this resistance level in the chart on Friday as we really just chased into uh, those big techs and pushing those um, earnings estimates, or I mean earnings uh, PE ratios to kind of an extreme. Let's take a look right in here. If I push this a little bit higher, you can see we could come all the way back up into here if those bulls could find some inspiration in that chart. If those bears were to find inspiration, well, then we've got that pullback maybe that tests this area of support right here. And if that were to fail, well, kind of keep in mind that we could lose that trend again if we were to fail and maybe come back in and test some of these support levels on down if those bears find some reason for some profit taking. Um, technically on this chart, also extremely bullish, the most bullish of the indexes out there by far. Um, 500 day moving average above, we'll want to be keeping an eye on that. Our IWM, which continues, although we rallied back up pretty sharply uh, Thursday and Friday on IWM, continues to be the most bearish index uh, in the market. It would be wise to keep in mind a lot of the regional banks um, are in this index. So as we push this rally back to the upside, let's keep in mind we're going to be running into some price resistance. Now, first, first level right here would be an interesting price resistance for us to break through. We um, have got that double whammy of that downtrend and that price resistance level in the chart. If they can break through there, I'm going to push this right back up here where we were before. We're going to look at that next resistance level. If those bears find inspiration, however, and we start to show failure here around this area, well, then I'm going to have to move this support level uh, that we were looking at back down here to those last lows. And I would be watching carefully down into here as the next test. Um, of price support in IWM. Technically here on this chart, um, th this is by far the most bearish of the indexes. 50 is crossed down through the 200. Um, our short-term moving averages are on down through there. And uh, for those of you that remember that back in the day, um, IWM used to be a leading indicator for the market. Uh, this is not good. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, whoops, better type the VIX. Our VIX just sank like a rock the last two days of trading, just dropping like crazy. We're down here in uh, 15 handles on the VIX, showing no fear whatsoever in the market. Absolutely a complete um, ignoring of the banking situation and ignoring the um, PE ratio levels that we've seen in the market here being uh, pretty darn inflated. So um, watch carefully for here. What we may suffer from today, tomorrow as we wait for the FOMC is a little bit of a hangover. We just partied too hard maybe on Thursday and Friday and we may have a little bit of a hangover here. If those 
bears don't really come in, then um, look for a little bit of stagnant choppy price action um, we'll just have to wait and see and maybe a little bit of a pop back up there on the VIX if we continue to fall in here well uh, as that continues to happen I'm just going to keep saying more and more complacency is coming into the market we're just sticking our head in the sand over the issues that we have out there in our economy we're completely ignoring the situation in PMI we're completely ignoring the situation in manufacturing and it just doesn't matter um, consumer debt just doesn't matter well eventually those things will and unfortunately this complacency that we're seeing here in the market could be painful if you're overly trading this market to the long side so just be careful let's take a look at our t2122 our t2122 well we pushed up here pretty high in the last couple of days of trading pressing this right back up toward that bearish reversal zone but we haven't made it there which tells us that we still have an opportunity if those bulls can continue to find that inspiration to drive forward then there may be that opportunity to move on higher and break some of those resistance levels to the upside in IW or in the indexes and I got to tell you there's no reason here in this chart that would suggest that that can't occur so you have to have um, that understanding that sometimes exuberance can continue to be exuberance uh, what they say is markets can remain irrational a lot longer than you can remain uh, liquid trying to fight that irrational move so watch that close now if those bears were to come in well just keep in mind that we have opened up a pretty big opportunity and that could be a nasty whipsaw if those bears were to come into play pushing us back lower so watch that close and then if we were to take a look at our t2108 well here's where I say that we we were really pressing on very select stocks. T2108 has come right back up here around 47 level in the chart, but you would have thought with a, a full 9% gain in the S&P 500 in just two days, we would have seen a little bit more of a broad base move in the market, and we didn't. It was really tech-centered and continuing to push in that tech-centric um, um, area. Um, left a lot of stocks on the sidelines moving just a little tiny bit so our t2108 we're back up here not quite where we were testing a week ago in that resistance level on t2108 if they can push through that then I'm going to suggest maybe we move up into the 50 percent area of stocks above their 40-day moving average if the bears were to come back in and if goldman sachs is right that ctas are set to sell then we'll want to be watching some of these support levels down in here for that whipsaw um, to the downside so just kind of keep an eye on that if we take a look at our t2107 well our t2107 pushing to the upside here and here again we didn't even make it all the way back up to the past resistance here in the chart on T2107. 43% of the stocks holding above their 200-day moving average. This again is showing us that it was only very select stocks that pressed us to the upside. Those big techs have that ability to move all three indexes, Diamond Spy and QQQ, because they're included in those three indexes, and they are the biggest companies out there by um, uh, by weight. So um, let's kind of keep an eye on that. Let's let's see if we can get some follow through um, from some other companies as we press this resistance here in T2107. If those bears were to come in, then we'll look for a retest of these support levels down here on T2107. Our T2101, interestingly enough, our momentum indicator here shifted on Friday. Now, <laughs> that seems kind of odd considering it was just buy, 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 buy right into the close, but the, that momentum showed a shift here. So we'll want to be watching for that possibility, a little bit of profit taking that could come in. And if that were to spark some fear, in the market then um, watch out we could have some pretty big point moves in the market so be a little bit careful there with that momentum showing that shift on friday let's take a look 
at our economic calendar here today. Now, our economic calendar, well, we've got um, quite a week ahead of us here with some data that obviously can move the market substantially. First off, this uh, today we're going to be dealing with a PMI manufacturing number, an ISM manufacturing number, and construction spending. Now we have by and large just ignored these numbers as they've been in decline and pressing the market higher. We'll see if they can continue to ignore those or perhaps maybe the market was correct in ignoring those and we're going to start seeing these turn back up providing a little bit of bullishness. Your guess is as good as mine. So watch that closely. We've got a couple of bond auctions. Our bonds have been fluctuating around here this morning. Um, kind of creeping up, but they've pulled back maybe just a little bit on that news of the FRC, FRC being taken over by JP Morgan. We'll see how all of that shakes out here today, so watch that closely. We've got um, on Mon or excuse me, Tuesday, vehicle sales. We've got the beginning of the FOMC meeting, factory orders, the job openings report will be coming in here, some more bond auctions. On Wednesday, as you can see in here, we've got a big day. We've got the Treasury um, refunding announcement that'll be coming in. We've got the ISM number, petroleum status, and then we're gonna have that FOMC announcement. We get the ADP and, and mortgage applications in there as well on the morning so um yeah wednesday's going to be a, a wild day then as we slip over into thursday international trading goods um, jobless claims productivity and costs natural gas a fed balance sheet and then on friday we're going to wrap this up with that big employment situation number coming in there so just be careful a lot of jobs data to this week a lot of um, um, uncertainty with the Fed. And one thing we have to include in here on Thursday that's going to add that next spike of uh, potential buying excitement or selling excitement, uh, Apple earnings will be Thursday afternoon. So uh, buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. Now our earnings calendar, um, pretty busy here today. I can't cover all of the notables here in the calendar for today. So if you want to catch that full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog where you can catch that full list. We're going to hear this morning from Car, um, Avis Rent a Car. Looks like we're getting a little bit of a, a pop here this morning. Uh, trying to hold that up, so watch that closely. Uh, we're going to hear from Fang this morning. We're going to hear from FMC. We'll be reporting. We're going to hear from, whoops, let's get Ben in here. Keep an eye on Ben. We're going to get report from um, LEG, MicroStrategy. We're going to hear from SBAC another real estate trust keep an eye on that um, SYK will be reporting we've got rig reporting today we're gonna hear from VNO today and NXPI uh, might be some of those you might want to be paying attention to and again if you want that full list of notables Click that link in the just below the title of the video. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, please do me that favor and that would be click those thumbs up buttons, leave that brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. And if you engage with the other comments in the channel, that also helps an awful lot. Another thing that you can do that would be very, very helpful is share these videos out on your social media feed. You can grab that link and just post it out there, share those videos. Thank you so much for those who do that. And then also if, um, um, you want to help support the channel, you can also do that through the Buy Me a Coffee link that's just below the title of the video as well. And thank you so much to everyone who does support the channel with uh, Buy Me a Coffee. I truly, truly appreciate it.
Let's take a peek at some of these charts that could be setting up and keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact do your own due diligence. Be very very careful in how you move forward in this market. Expect lots of volatility this week as these uncertainties come around. First off let's take a look at our US dollar. Our US dollar has been struggling here in a range we had some news out of Japan where they were leaving policy the same. That helped strengthen the dollar on Friday and then it quickly weakened. Let's watch that closely as that challenges this resistance level in the chart. This could be very important for us here in the market. We've seen lots of stories about de-dollarization and all of those things going on around the world. Keep an eye on that. We don't want to see this weaken um, too terrible much, but if it gains strength, um, lots of strength then we'll look for some of those commodity prices to sink if it weakens then we would look for those commodity prices to remain strong so keep an eye on that keep an eye on things like gold is another um, thought process in here if that dollar weakens look for gold to strengthen you can see we're holding in here on a area of support we're moving up in a trend. We still have quite a little bit of time of rest in here before we contact that trend, which means we could get that breakdown in here or we could just continue to consolidate here in that chart. So watch GLD, also silver. Um, pretty interesting chart in here on silver, continuing to hold that price support. And this morning it's trying to poke higher here. So watch that careful here in silver as it tries to gain some strength. Um, take a look at another commodity, CCJ. CCJ, this is a, um, uh, a uranium play here. And we got past our earnings here just the other day on CCJ. And as you can see, we're pushing to that upside. We've got a little pattern right in here where we broke through this wedging move to the upside breaking through some resistance in here. As you can see, if this were to rest or pull back, this little downtrend in here has been defeated. Rest or pull back could set an upside opportunity here. And we know China is moving into um, doing a lot of nuclear build out in um, some of their power. Um, so watch that closely. And of course, we've been hearing about um, uh, startups um, a whole bunch of startups of shutdown plants um, over in uh, China, Japan, things like that as uh, attention to uh, the power needs and um, the ability of uranium to provide that. Um, seeing a ramp up maybe in some of those um, power plants. So watch that close. Let's take a look at some other stocks in here to maybe be paying attention to. Um, NVIDIA um, with the big tech um, rally that's been going on, NVIDIA is going to be reporting here toward the end of the month. And right now, as you can see, it's just continuing to stay locked in a range. So if we're going to continue to push um, those big techs higher, I might watch this in here for that potential rally um, heading into the earnings report on NVIDIA. Watch that one closely. Unfortunately, AMD, well, maybe not so much. Now, this is going to report uh, tomorrow on 5-2. Rallying back up here, trying to break this downtrend. Boy, there is some question here heading into the earnings on uh, um, AMD. You might want to watch this for the potential of a failure of resistance, a uh, higher low uh, possibly coming in there if we happen to miss on the AMD report. Watch that one close. If we take a look at some of our shippers, um, we know that UPS had a really, really bad day on their earnings report. And what we've seen lately is any pullback in a stock immediately gets bought. And that's kind of what happened here. We're just zooming it right back up to the upside. Now, with UPS's troubles that we that we saw in their earnings, I would watch this closely as we approach that resistance area in the chart for that next potential sell-off here in um, UPS and that could be a problem because we need these shippers if we're going to be a very strong market if the consumers are going to continue to spend we do a lot of that through the mail now so watch that closely if this starts to falter that could be a little bit of a problem for us uh, take a look at Disney Disney had a big move the last couple of days looked like we were going to break down with these new lawsuits with Florida and things um, going 
going on there. But a big push to the upside here. If um, we can hold this uh, break of support or break of resistance and hold it as support, then I would look for that next upside move. Keeping in mind trend might be out here. We may have to rest there for a little bit. Keep an eye on uh, Disney. Um, emerging markets. There was a story out the other day suggesting that emerging markets could see a major sell off here coming. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but watch that closely. There certainly is a lot of conversation about recession, stagflation, and that would certainly have negative impacts here on those emerging markets. Keep an eye on that. This is a possible short setting up. I would watch carefully to see if that um, fails along that resistance in the chart. Now, because I'm already 25 minutes long in this video, I'm gonna cut that off there. I wanna wish you guys a fantastic day. I wanna wish you great results in your trading. Hopefully you're having some great spring weather on May Day. Um, so be careful, be safe out there, and have a wonderful day. We'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best.